OK, so where have we got to? Just sort of gather it together. Trials are always too short for the economic purpose. The economic purpose is to make a realistic estimate of the costs over the lifetime of the patient of one strategy or another strategy. The economic purpose, not just the cost, is also to work out over time how long patients receiving one strategy, one treatment, will spend in different health states compared to the time they spend in different health states with the other treatment. That's going to drive a difference in qualities. So we need a good estimate of survival to predict this future. So we can make good estimates of the costs and the difference in cost and the qualities and the difference in qualities. So that's why we need it. We've got lots of different functions we can use. I've pointed out it matters which one we use. It's not straightforward to decide which one is most appropriate. It can be very difficult. Now, as if that's not enough of a problem, we then come to another problem. And it's called treatment switching. In randomized controlled trials, patients are frequently allowed to switch treatment. For example, um, when their disease progresses, they'll stop getting the treatment they were getting and they may well be offered the alternative treatment. Now this is perfectly reasonable. I mean, it's almost like punishing the patient for coming into the trial if you don't allow them to switch. Because if they progress, that drug has not worked for them. So we, we can't reasonably stop them from switching treatment. It's ethically, it's just uh, not appropriate. So that's fine. But that then gives us the problem. If a patient switches treatment, how long they live will be partly a product of the treatment switch. And particularly, if we've got a control group such as best supportive care, and then an active group, um, might have been the azacitidine, if the best supportive care patients switch in onto azacitidine during the trial, after the, maybe after they progress, by following the best supportive care group and seeing when they die, or predicting when they die, we're going to get a biased estimate of how well azacitidine works. We're going to underestimate how well azacitidine is working. Now our estimates of progression-free survival, that period before they progress, will be okay, because no switching's happened. But if patients are allowed to switch once they progress, our estimates of overall survival are potentially biased. And generally, it will give us an underestimate. Now, if we underestimate the benefit of azacitidine or any new drug, that is a problem because if we underestimate the benefit, we're more likely to say no to whether it's cost effective. And so we could get into a situation where we're saying no to a new drug, but really we should have said yes. So this is a, a, a problem. So, we need to do something about treatment switching. Do you get the idea that why do we have trials? Randomized controlled trials. We have randomized controlled trials in order to get as good an estimate of the treatment effect as we can. 
And if all the patients get one treatment, sorry, one, if one half get one treatment and the other half get another treatment, any difference we observe between the two patient groups, we're fairly sure is because of the difference in treatment. Because we've, we've randomized patients at the outset, drug A or drug B. But in the situation where treatment switching occurs, the groups are no longer separate. We've got a group who may just get drug A, a group who just get drug B, another group who get A and then maybe switch to B, potentially even a group who get B and then switch to A. And so we're not getting a, a clear estimate of the treatment effect. And as I say, risk of, well, I am repeating myself, but it's important. We are really worried about getting a, a biased estimate of the treatment effect, because if we get the treatment effect estimate biased, we're going to get our quality calculation wrong, we're going to get our cost calculation wrong, and our estimate of the cost per additional quality gained is liable to be wrong as well. In which case, we might then make the wrong decision as to whether we should say yes or no. Um, question you might do treatment switching is very complicated because it is very hard to predict what happens if the patient continues the treatment. And another concern is sometimes the cost effective analysis would be done by pharmaceutical companies, which would be, as you say, uh, inherently biased, uh, how do you say? Yes, they, they want to make as strong a case as they can for their product. So, in principle, I'm not sure if ITT analysis is the baseline analysis or, let to say, uh, analysis which consider between switching is the standard one. How is the, as you say, the most fair way to handle the, this problem? Okay. Um, you refer to ITT, that's intention to treat. So the way we usually examine or analyze trials is when we randomize half the patients to one treatment, half to another treatment, that is our intention, that they'll get that treatment, they'll get that treatment, and then we treat the data as if they got that treatment. And so you're asking, is that the fairest way? Or is adjusting the results, because you are adjusting um, for treatment switching, is that fairer or less fair? Um, well, ITT intention to treat is easier because it's clean. We, we know at the randomization, this half got that treatment. Uh, we're randomized to that treatment. This half randomized to that treatment. But if treatment switching takes place, we can be pretty sure it's a biased estimate we've got from the intention to treat. So I think it's probably better to try and adjust for treatment switching. The problem that arises is there are different methods, and you won't be surprised, different methods can give rise to different results. And so we're in this territory again, which one do we believe? Now, um, different methods of treatment switching make different assumptions, and it might be that we can demonstrate that some assumptions are more plausible than others. Uh, so I might have an example of, of that here. Um, 